and spaces, quick as a wink to distant places, bringing a smile to lonely faces. Life is on the telephone. Separate people get together with a simple call. Even the darkest stormy weather can affect them. We'll connect them. Clickety click click, the dials are swinging. Ding a ling ling, the bells are ringing. Tra la la la, hearts are singing. Life is on. as soon as she comes in. Someone left the lights on up there again. I, uh, I turned them off. Okay, dear. Oh, there's no use burning lights, so we don't need... Uh, who was that on the phone? Kansas City calling Harriet. Kansas City again, huh? Tom, I suppose. I expect. Must cost that boy a pretty penny. I don't know, young fellas, Tom they got all... Tom think it's the... worth it to talk to our daughter. Yes, I know, but uh, every couple of days... Is that Aunt Emily's letter? Yeah, that's Aunt Emily's letter. Sometimes I wonder what gets into women here. She writes me a letter. Now, dear, I can understand. She feels she's been left with all the responsibility. But she's right there. We're 700 miles away. I can't sell the farm from here. Garber buys it. You have nothing to worry about. I know, I know, but now he wants to know about the woodlot. He saw the place. Yes, but he didn't get back to the woods. Well, I'll just drop him a note and tell her to tell him that we've got a good woodlot. Dear, don't you think you ought to telephone her? No, a letter will get there tomorrow or the next day. Maybe there'll be other questions. And anyway, it'll make Aunt Emily feel better, hmm? No, I'll just put it in a letter. I've uh, just got time to write it before the boys get here and... Uh... Hi. Oh, hello, darling. Hello, dear. <gasps> oh, we have a letter here from Dick. He writes you regularly, doesn't he? He doesn't mm -hmm. spend his money on long distance. <laughs> Did Tom phone again? It's probably him. You're supposed to call operator 621 Kansas City. I'll get it in my room. Kansas City? I didn't even know he was there. Anyway, Tom knows how to stir people up. Well, beats me. What can they say to each other that's worth calling long distance? Money he spends, he could buy his own pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> I miss you so much it hurts. What are you wearing right now? What am I wearing? Uh, do you remember that, that blue and green polka dot dress? You've seen it a dozen times. I can hardly wait to see it again. You know, I think about you all the time. You miss me? You know I do. When are you coming home? I'm not sure yet. I'm working on something. Can't tell you now, but I'll know by next Friday. I'll call you then, right after 6, OK? I'll be waiting. Goodbye, honey. Bye-bye. Was it Tom? Mm-hmm. What do you have to say? Oh, nothing special. <laughs> he wanted to know what I was wearing. He's lonesome for me. <laughs> well, that sounds pretty special to me. Um, what did Dick's letter say? Oh, letter. Let's see. He got a raise. Mm-hmm. And he wants to get married. You? Yes. What are you going to say? Well, I, I don't know. I... Oh, well, I don't have to make up my mind right now anyway. You're a lucky girl, you know. Have two fine boys like Tom and Dick crazy about you. Hmm. Well, at least Dick was crazy about me last Sunday night when he wrote this letter. But I know Tom is crazy about me right now. I just heard him say so. I wish Dad could understand that. 
Well, Tom's the new generation. Oh, don't I know it. Listen. Dad's barbershop quartet. <laughs> that heavenly hour court in those old-fashioned ways. Traveling one horse power in those good old horse and buggy days. Those horse and buggy days. Well, that's Dad, all right. He's still living in those good old horse and buggy days. Just in some ways. Well, he is about Tom phoning me. Dear, when Daddy was young, people mostly talked long distance only in emergencies. But he'll catch up. He has in other ways. There are two cars out there in our garage. No horses. <laughs> well, I just hope he doesn't get excited when Tom phones again Friday night. Oh, Friday, Daddy will be busy. The quartet's having a dress rehearsal for the charity show. They're doing their old-fashioned telephone number. Oh. I've got a honey baby to the side of town. I talk to her upon the telephone. Telephone. I just can't see her every day, but I'll be bound. I won't let her forget she's mine alone. Mine alone. You bet I've got her number. She's got mine as well. Along a short, along, I'm on her line. Then with thanks to Mr. Alexander Graham Bell, why, this is what I say to baby mine. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my ragtime gal. Hello, my baby. Send me a kiss by wire. Baby, my heart's on fire. Oh, baby. If you refuse me, honey, you lose me. And you'll be left alone. Oh, baby, telephone. And tell me I'm your own Hello, my baby Hello, my honey Hello, my ragtime gal My baby Send me a kiss by wire Baby, my heart's on fire Oh, baby If you refuse me, honey you lose me And you'll be left alone Special delivery Thank you And tell me I'm your own uh, excuse me, will you fellas? Yeah, be right sure. back. Hey, guys, once more on that... It's Emily. Emily? Stan, a little more schmaltz on a harmony. Oh, yeah. hi. Baby, my heart's on fire. Dear James, Garber bought the St. Clair farm instead of ours. He liked our place better, but says the St. Clairs have a bigger wood lot. Why, he's crazy. St. Clair's is mostly scrub and locust, and ours is good oak and pine, finishing lumber. I know. You told me that, but did you tell Emily? Well, no, honey. You see, I was in a hurry, and uh, the pen wouldn't work, and... Oh. I know. I'm sick, too. Hello? Just a minute. It's for you, long distance, Fond du Lac. Hello? Hello, Emily. Hello, James? It's Emily. Did you get my letter? I just got it. Well, I thought I'd better call you. It happened after I wrote. And it wouldn't have happened if it hadn't have been for your phone call. What happened? What wouldn't have happened? What phone call? Emily's off a rocker. She thinks I telephoned her. I did. Well, anyway, Mr. Garber reconsidered when I told him what you said about the woodlot. He bought our farm after all. Hello? Hello? James, are, are you still there? Garber bought our farm. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I, I'm, uh, I'm still here. I'm right here, Emily. Yes. You telephoned her? I just told her your selling point. Well, I couldn't have done it without your help. It made me feel so good just knowing you were backing me up. Well, I thought you'd like to get the news right away. That's why I telephoned. Well, I, I, I'm sure glad you, you did. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Mary wants to talk to you. <laughs> Be right Hello. back, then. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, That's Emily. Uh, wonderful news. Wonderful. Yeah, you're wonderful. <laughs> we're so excited. It's Aunt Emily. Yeah. She sold the farm. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> 
wonderful. Yeah, it is wonderful. Wonderful. Believe me. Sure it is. Well, that was Harriet. She just came in. Y yes. Yeah. Yeah, just a minute. She wants to talk to oh, you. Be right yeah. back. It's Harriet. <laughs> and Anne? Yes, I just heard. Uh, <laughs> oh, you bet it is. You know, you could never get this with a letter, could you? <laughs> I'll be sitting pretty back in Kansas City when the sun goes down. Kansas City, that's the town. Oh, yes, that wonderful town. You didn't eat all your pie. Yeah, I know. Can I get you some more coffee? No, thanks. You sure you don't want something else? Nope, not a thing. Oh. You a stranger here in town? Well, sort of. Me too. Sure gets lonesome, don't it? I thought maybe you were, well, waiting around. You know. I get through at 8. Is that clock right? Oh, no. That's always been five minutes slow. Well, then it's 6 o'clock. I've got a new job. Oh, Tom, I'm so happy for you. It's just the kind I've been wanting. But I won't take it unless you'll marry me and come along. Will you, honey? Well, I don't know what to say. Say yes. Look, you know I love you and you love me. Life's no fun when we're not together. Oh, honey, say yes and see how good it sounds. Well, well, yes. Tom, it does sound good. It sounds just right. <sighs> Yahoo! Hey, mister, you forgot your chain. It's all yours. <laughs> now, I can tell this is the best show we've ever had. Now, the one last year, but this has more power. Listen, listen. listen. Tom proposed, and I said yes. And if we get one? Well, what? Did you hear that, fellas? My daughter Harriet's engaged. Let me at that telephone. What are you going to do? Oh, well, I'm going to tell all the folks. That's what I'm going to do. We'll be getting our printed announcement. Oh, that's too slow for relatives and close friends. Come on, get me Emily in, in Fond du Lac. Get him Fond du Lac. Fond du Lac is 414. And uh, then I want Atlanta. He, he wants Atlanta. Atlanta. Then Boston, Dallas, and San Diego. Boston, Dallas, San Diego. And Wapakoneta. Wapakoneta? <laughs> yes, by George. Wapakoneta. I... Oh, I... oh, hello, Emily. Yes. Wapakoneta, Kalamazoo. Tuscaloosa, Tallahassee, Tippecanoe. Albuquerque, Ypsilanti, Montreal. You've heard the story of Tom, Dick, and Harriet, her dad and her mother, and the one she will marry. It has a moral.